Guys, my name is Ron, and I'm Paul. And today, I just want to send out a special message to our message, Mr. Patty Cakes, <laughs> whose last day at work today. He's moving on to greener pastures. Just want to say congratulations, dude. Congrats, Patrick. We're going to miss you. Wish you luck, and uh, definitely get your butt back in the plane. And don't be a stranger. We yeah. want you to comment for sure, man. But yeah, uh, Paul. How are we doing uh, today, Ron? Doing great. We're, we're actually starting kind of a new, uh, I, I'm afraid to kind of call it a series because I don't know when we're going to do this again, but it's going to be something that we're going to do every so often. Uh, today's um, episode is called America's Most Haunted, and we are going to go through and, you know, when we do these episodes, Paul's going to pick two places. I'm going to pick two places and we're just going to kind of go down the line and tell you about some of the most creepy places in uh, America. Well, <laughs> haunted anyways, haunted ones. <laughs> haunted. Creepy. Yes. But yeah, um, definitely rate, like, and subscribe. Uh, we are on the road to 100, trying to get our YouTube channel up to 100 subscribers. That'll really help us. Cause then we can put a name to our URL Finally. <laughs> Great. Let's go. Yes. Uh, Let's go. So, yeah. Obviously, today's another paranormal episode. We know you guys like that. <laughs> Keep coming back for more. So, Paul, why don't you uh, get us right into our uh, sure, guys. first haunted place. Sure. So, we picked a couple. There are so many to choose from, <laughs> literally. Um, we want to take a stab at a couple things that I found to be kind of interesting, but kind of creepy at the same time. You know how I roll on the stuff. Yeah. So the first one I'm going to mention, um, as far as where the haunting is concerned, so there was a situation back right before 1900. Yeah. Actually, out in Lucas County, Ohio, closer to Lima, um, it, it involved the uh, Malabar Farm State Park. Malabar. 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 Beautiful park. I've never actually been to that to that area. I went to Lima maybe once years ago but southern ohio so if anybody has been there before comment give us some information but mm -hmm. uh the park is beautiful but there's a underlying situation that happened there I'm yeah giving my best scary voice in the meantime <laughs> so the story that is involved is a has to deal with a 23 year old woman named Celie rose and what had happened was <laughs> sorry <laughs> she sounds hot <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're going to really like what I'm about to tell you, but I'm going to get into that shortly here. Oh, dear. But hey, you know, it is what it is. All right. Tweet us alone. Um, so there was really nothing. This was a nice park, small, you know, community s type thing. And then something happened and it had to do with this woman. Now, she's 23 years old. Okay. She had, you know, her parents. She's at home. But information starts to come about, um, and I did some research through this through like Mansfield News Journal. Um, they had mentioned that at her age of 23, everyone that kind of knew of her, she had some issues with, um, you know, being slow. Um, just things are not there together. I don't, I want to say it the, the nicest way possible, but, um, but basically. How slow are we talking well, they said that for her at 23, she had the capacity of a child's mind. Okay. So somewhere around that. And they also said she was kind of a, a rather large-ish, boyish figure. Yeah, you know where I'm going. I stand corrected. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be nice. Everyone be nice. But anyway. Um, hey, you can agree with me. The name sounds awesome. <laughs> See the rose, right? All right. 
So anyway, so what happens is, is that <laughs> I don't know why that I immediately thought of Steely Dan, right? <laughs> <laughs> Asia, <laughs> she's here. Um, but it, the story takes a really dark turn. And what I kind of mentioned is, so she actually has a crush on the boy next door. Mm-hmm. His name is Guy Barry. He's about 16 at the time. Now, obviously, what we've just discussed, Seely was picked on, bullied to ends ends of all earth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can imagine. Literally. Now, in the in the situation, Guy came to her rescue because he didn't like seeing her get picked on or, you know, anything in that nature. Kind of just kind of reminds me of like the movie Carrie, yeah. you know, when you think about that. But anyway. So he was just, he was trying to be, you know, look out for her. He didn't want anyone to have to go through something like that. So she obviously took a liking to him and she fell in love with him. Love is blind. We all know this, ladies and gents. I can't really answer this one for you, but the parents just did not want her seeing this boy thinking ulterior motives (laughs) specifically. Like, like the boy was taking advantage of her. They might've thought that or because of of her intellect and the way things are that she's just going to set herself up for hurt or Mm -hmm. failure. You know what I mean? So they forbidden her to see this boy. Well, she didn't like that. Yeah. So based on what was going on through this struggle, she would later try to get with him being like, I need to be with him. But the only way to do that is to take things out of the equation. He, he obviously had no feelings for her. Um, but she went ahead and poisoned her family. What? Now, at the time, they said that this was in the cottage cheese. So I don't know how much you like cottage cheese. That's okay. So the story kind of pans out that it could have been either rat poisoning or arsenic. So she literally poisoned her family. How would she know? That's what would take their. That is out? that is the question. Nothing was said like, oh, how could she differentiate? She knows what poison is. Right. I mean, I get the whole thing, you know, like bottles and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it was very simple labeling and stuff back then. So maybe the whole skull and crossbow thing. Like she hit hit it in a a guest house, you know, keep it from her parents. Then eventually, like during one of the family meals, she just kind of inserted it in there. Yeah. Uh, Her dad passed away. Her siblings did as well. Her mom actually didn't die right off the bat. What her mom did was try to protect her from the authorities. So she covered the whole thing up. What? Yeah. <laughs> the mother's like, I yeah, can't do this. She basically came up with a statement, tried to go the whole nine yards so her daughter wouldn't have to take the wrath. And you ask yourself, wow, I don't know how I, you guys tell me, what would you do? For one thing, my, I don't know why my thought process works like this, but to me, mm-hmm. Like if the mom, if everybody's died except for the mom and the mom's trying to take the rap for her, I wouldn't take the rap for her at all. And it's not a thing of spite or anything. It's just, if right. she has no family to take care of her anymore, yeah. at least knowing that she'd be in jail for the rest of her life, being taken care of every day, it would be a little more, you know, I, but I mean, she got a, <laughs> her daughter tried to kill her. So I can understand there's no really reasonable thought in this it's just, equation. It's just, it's just startling, you know, but so, yeah, so, so the mom, so the mom covers up for her. It's so fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and then it was to the point that her mom covers for her. And I want to say maybe, maybe a couple months. Let me just double check this real quick. This was, uh, this was June of 1896. So actually a month later, she ended up poisoning her mom again. Again? Mm-hmm. Arsenic in a jar of buttermilk. <laughs> a jar of buttermilk. That's, that's what the historian had put down Here's here. There's a key thing here. If oh, you don't succeed, don't try again. Got a fucking jar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just, just fucked up. I mean, she just wanted the whole family out of the equation to be with the boyfriend. Wow. So then obviously over time, after she obviously, you know, takes care of her mother. At that point, she ends up finding out that, you know, she basically comes to guy and guys like I, this is not what this is. So she's heartbroken 
And she just now is under the realization that she murdered her whole family. And then basically at that point, you know, she confessed to her crimes. So she spent her remaining days in a mental institution. Wow. That's disturbing. But the, but, and then here's the other thing. It's like they had, they had a a special on ghost hunters, Mm -hmm. but seven, eight years ago, could not find this episode. I wanted to watch in the worst way. Only thing I was able to get was a promo where a team of paranormal experts had come into the property. Now, mind you, one thing I kind of skipped over real quick here. Sorry about that, guys. So in 1939, uh, this author named uh, Louis uh, Bromfield had purchased the home. Mm-hmm. And he actually had the first accountability as far as what had happened with this story. I thought it was a chick. That's what I thought, too. But... Um, When they went ahead, at least what I saw in the promo for Ghost Hunters, they were going into the house. Now, the house was just just basic, like, just yeah. one-story house. The Outside the first uh, bedroom is where Celie's room was. Mm-hmm. So they always said that there was a lot of activity in her bedroom. Mm-hmm. And all I could see in this video is one of the people that was actually scoping out the bedroom. This one woman lay down on the bed, and she asked her for her to tickle her. <laughs> and she did. Eek. 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 Um, but but it draws attention we had talked about maybe wanting to take a trip out there but the problem is is that there's no established road to where it is yeah. so you're gonna have to park in the outskirts and then you can kind of find your ways but they do give tours towards halloween so it just depends hmm. on when you know when the timing is right i don't know if they've done it during covid or not um but that's kind of the situation that happened in Lucas County. And the, you see the house. It's a pretty little house. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. But uh, <laughs> but don't poison your parents, guys. <laughs> but I love him. I love him so much. He so loves much. me back. He loves me now. He loves me now. She showed me a boobies, and I liked him, too. She showed me a boobies, and I liked him, too. I couldn't help it, folks. I'm sorry. So that, yeah, um, and I'm and I'm sure there is a whole bunch more that goes in regards to this, but just it kind of gave me the creeps a little bit, hmm. just for the fact that you know her parents told her no, and she just was like, "I'm going to do what I want," but it really took the point that you, you know, took your parents' life and your and your siblings. I mean, so what other kind of activity would happen? I mean. Like from what you just said, it was just they had, mainly like they had so so they tickling. were tickling. <laughs> um, they said as far as people going through her bedroom, there was just you know the coldness, the activity. Mm-hmm. You know, did they want to actually be there or not? Should they be there or not? Um, but I really wanted to see more of that one because that was the only particular episode that was there. Everything was all was just brief description, but I wanted yeah, to at least right. try to get some actual footage of the situation, which was. A minute and a half promo, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you. But at the end of the day, I mean, careful what you wish for. <laughs> love thy neighbor. Love thy parents. Right. Oh, guys and girls are stupid. There's enough of them out there in the sea. You'll find the right one one day. <laughs> Not worth killing your family over it. There's plenty of fish in Plenties. the sea. Plenties. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. Well, do you want to go on to your next one, or would you like me to... Do uh, my short one next. Uh, it's up to you. I don't know. Do we have time before our first break? Or yeah, I can. Roll? I can squeeze this. In okay, here. go ahead, squeeze it in, baby. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> nice and slow. <laughs> nice and slow. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so my case is today is my case. Okay, my case today is over the Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas. Yes. A uh, funny little story. Um, I've actually stayed at this, but it was called the Hilton, the Las Vegas Hilton okay. when I stayed in it. But I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so the Westgate opened up in 1969. It was called the International Hotel, and it was um, it was the largest hotel in the world from 1981 until 1990. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. No. That was something I just learned out today. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they changed the name to the Las Vegas Hilton, I think, in uh, 
I think it was around uh, 1988, I think. Or no. I got that wrong. I'm sorry. They changed the name in 1981. Okay. But, um, yeah, so... The big thing with this one is there is a particular suite there that is now known as the uh, Tuscany Sky Villa. And it was Elvis Presley's uh, Vegas home. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) So this is uh, on the 30th floor, simply room 3000. Really? And, uh, So Elvis spent a lot of time there. Like I just said, it's his Vegas home. So he had performed 636 sold out shows there from, uh, from 69 until I think it was um, 76 or 77, something like that. Seven or eight years. Wow. Yeah. Long time. Long residency, right? Oh yeah, and that's where he—that's all where he did all of his shows those last remaining times, or when he was in Vegas and stuff. <laughs> Vegas home, right? But, so obviously, lots of people report seeing the king himself there, <laughs> doing a little all uh-huh. uh-huh. hound dog. But they say they've seen him in like the hallways. They reportedly seen him backstage where he would frequently prepare before going in. <laughs> going on stage but um a lot of stuff about that was as i was digging into it it's more than just his room or seeing elvis there's stuff like you know the lights randomly turning on or hmm. off for no reason uh, Eek. things like i read a particular story where somebody saw a shadow uh figure that looked kind of like a little girl walking to the bathroom when he woke up in the middle of the night. <laughs> and then also, you know, people report rustling of bags and stuff. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, and simply like a lamp getting just tossed right. out of nowhere, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of weird shit like that. Well, reading these and stuff, you know, <clears throat> it, it, it reminded me when I stayed there, first off, it was the most comfortable bed I'd ever slept in at, up until that point. <laughs> it was great, and uh, I had a fun little idea that I wanted to do. Um, I decided I was going to call an escort service and have it sent to my buddy's room that was staying up far <laughs> from me. <laughs> so you just have somebody just show up randomly. But yeah, I'm here to clean some pipes. <laughs> it just all fell through because uh, I didn't have the right number. <laughs> So I'd sent some random random escort to some random person's <laughs> room. <laughs> I better get paid for this. Oh, that was so <laughs> nice stupid. Nice job, Ron. Yeah. But uh <laughs> <laughs> So childish. Uh anyways. That's funny. Uh but yeah, I had a little thing myself. I woke up and I did see like I can't say it was like a figure of somebody. What year was this? This was in 2011. Okay. I think. And what now? So you. Yeah. 2011. But I saw. I didn't see a figure or anything like that. Like I've said before, like I haven't seen anything per se. But I could have swore I saw somebody push the uh, curtain open. The curtain opened, opened, like oh not just a little breeze open. It was like open. Shh. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. So that was my first little, well, I, I think that was some really crazy, weird stuff. I can't explain. So I'm going to chop that up to a paranormal <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, everybody. The Elvis has left the building. We got to take a break. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Yeah, boy. Jack chicken. Jack chicken. And we're back. Hello. <laughs> Just a little follow up. <laughs> I guess I should elaborate a little more because uh, Paul was asking some questions. So, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing with my uh, my friend with the other room and He's, the escort thing. <laughs> <friend. laughs> <laughs> it was my roommate in Vegas. I'm so it was, no. Uh, so what had happened was, um, I had thought I had the right room. <laughs> um, 
So the next day I go and question him about this and uh, <laughs> Hey buddy, how you doing? It's not really I didn't question about like I, I wanted to see like what happened. I don't know if he maybe he took the bait. I don't know. <laughs> you were just waiting I for him to know. turn all beat red, like, what did you think I did? Right. Touch a run. And he was just like, ah, oh, I slept really good, man. <laughs> so like, okay, so as we're leaving, I looked because part of me I was like, did I have the right room? Like I was I was awaiting a reaction of some sort. And I looked, it was the wrong room. <laughs> he got nothing. <laughs> so what had happened was, I thought the numbers went this way down. So I just did the math and that was the number, right? They went this way. <laughs> yes, Ron Ken counts. <laughs> yeah, so I did the math right. I just didn't have the right direction. <laughs> if you're not going north, you're going south. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the funny thing about it, I never once said anything. No, it was the it. end of that. That huh? was just the end of oh. that. Yeah. yeah, chalk it up for what's worth. Probably nothing happened. <laughs> it's probably a good thing it did. Hopefully nothing happened. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. All well, right. It's so good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and dive into my next one. And it is quite the famous place. Uh, it's actually the uh, Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. Now, most of its fame is derived from the fact that uh, Stephen King had stayed there and it inspired his uh, The Overlook Hotel for his novel that gave us The Shining. The Shining. So I'm going to read just a little bit of his um, kind of what inspired that whole thing. So when he arrived, um, the King's... They learned that the hotel was closing for the winter and that there would only be a skeleton crew there, <laughs> but they ended up staying anyways. They checked into room 217, which I'll talk about that a little later, but so they stayed in room 217. It's called the Pre the presidential suite. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I can learn how to talk pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm podcasting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you too can do this. <laughs> okay. It's okay. been a long week. Long <sighs> week. So anyways, uh, they were the only guests in the hotel when this uh, was going down. But uh, that night, the author had a uh, nightmare in which he saw his young son being chased down the hotel's long, empty corridors by a predatory possessed fire hose. <laughs> yeah. He woke in a drenched. I'm gone. <laughs> he, he woke drenched in sweat and stepped to the balcony to smoke a cigarette. By the time he stubbed it out, he'd worked out the bones of what would become his third novel and first bestseller, The Shining. So there's already kind of a whole little thing with Room 217 just just because Stephen King went there and, you know, was inspired for The Shining. Of course. You know, and of course in the novel, they turned, they changed the name to the Overlook Hotel. But nonetheless, there's actually some interesting history behind Room 217. Apparently in uh, 19, in the 1920s, there was a gas leak hmm. in 217. Hmm. That led to an explosion that destroyed the second floor of the uh, dining hall, of the main dining hall. Shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> it almost killed a maid <laughs> that was in there. <laughs> but that's the interesting thing about the Stanley Hotel is, you know, there's activity there for sure. Mm -hmm. But there's not, like, everybody wants to think and ask, like, how many murders have ever happened here and... It's really no different from any other hotel. I mean, this place is like gorgeous hotel. Mm -hmm. But something interesting too with room two one seven is Jim Carrey stayed there in that room. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> and he woke up in the middle of the night and fled the hotel room, never to return. <laughs> and this happened while they were filming the movie Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm getting out of here. Oh, Harry. Lloyd. I love that movie. I man. love him too. Yeah. I have to catch. Oh, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> no shit. So he stayed in there, huh? Yeah. That was a little fun fact that I didn't know when I was researching this. But yeah. So 
yeah, they it's really interesting. They have obviously it's a really gorgeous ar- architecture. They have a world famous whiskey bar there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have like underground tunnels that the servicemen used to use. Really? Yeah, that they'll take you down to do like ghost hunts and stuff like that with now. <laughs> the whole place leans into the whole paranormal thing. It should. Like they have plenty of ghost tours. Uh, they actually have a guy that gives ghost tours that actually lives on the top floor of that place all year round. Uh, he says it's one of the one of the more haunted places he's been at, and he's been to quite a few. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's from England, I believe. I, I can't, his name like slips my mind right now. I think it's like Latep or something like that is his last name. But uh, yeah, he went in a lot about that. But the fourth floor is the most haunted of the place. And there was also another room. I think it was room four, four one six or something like that. But the red run room. The Red Rum Room? <laughs> Maybe. Red, 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 red. <laughs> it's murder backwards, right? <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah. Um, the place is just really neat, but a lot of it can be chalked up to like, you know, squeaks and old floors and wind. <laughs> right. <laughs> but a lot of people report seeing apparitions. Um, <laughs> a lot of people report seeing shadow figures. Uh, stuff moving on their own, of course, you know, kind of light poltergeist activity, right, I guess. Right. But um, didn't really come across anything um, too rambunctious, not in, anything really noteworthy. It's just there's a lot of reported activity. Mm-hmm. Of course, none of this can be really proven. So the whole thing with this America's Most Haunted is we kind of just kind of see what we can and kind of figure out, eh, is this worth mentioning? Maybe not. I don't, Maybe think so. I, I don't think I could go there. I would. I don't think I could stay a night there. Yeah, I would definitely stay a night there for sure. That's the thing is like with the 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 Westgate Villa that Elvis had, I want us to go there one day. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm down for that. But yeah, I, I don't want to go to the Shining Hotel. That makes no. me want to make that a Rooster Travels episode so much more <laughs> just to drag your ass out there. Get 217. You're not, you're not taking me to the Red Rum house. I kind of wonder if maybe they have that room like rigged up now, you know, because there's so much lore and fame behind it. They just want people to keep coming back, even if it That's is just true. for that room. That could be. I mean, I might do something like that if I had a hotel and <laughs> be like, people think it's haunted. All right, let's make it fun. <laughs> right. Let's just let's just sell them on a lie and keep them coming back, Helltown. Yeah. Helltown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So mad about it. Yeah. But hey, we did go back to that place and go hiking again. It was really it was fun. I took my wife and her and her mom and my son out there and we just So you told your mother in law, you're like, This isn't really Helltown. Yeah, I told her it's like <laughs> don't believe the hype. This, no. This is nothing. No, it's pretty nice. Yeah, that was a fun episode. Yes, it was. But yeah. But yeah, that's the Stanley Hotel. You know, it was uh I just couldn't I couldn't go there. I would. I would definitely check it out. Danny would be running in the back of my mind. <laughs> couldn't do it. Could not. Uh, great Stanley Kubrick film. Indeed. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, what do you got? So we'll go one time. I, I'm okay with that. Me sure? I w- I could consider doing that. We're not going we're not going to we're not going to Shining. Nope. Nope. Do not seven. Nada. Nada. <laughs> so my second little story has to do with the Athens insane asylum Mm. out in athens ohio now i actually tried to speak with a couple of my work colleagues who are alumni of ohio university if anybody is listening or watching and you are an alumni please chime in give me some information if you're aware of this so basically what we're going to discuss was there was an asylum out in that area and it was bad (laughs) <laughs> a lot of bad stuff, Ron. Electrotherapy, I, I don't under- Ron. Seriously, though, there's not anything that I can ever think of. When you hear the word anything asylum. anything good that goes with asylum. <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously, some bad shit happened. <laughs> I mean, have we ever heard of a good recuper- recuperating co- program? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> but before I go any further, so the asylum, this is actually interesting. I told you about this off air. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a, a situation where we actually learned about Levi Schofield. He was the architect of the Mansfield Reformatory. Mm-hmm. Also developed the plans for the asylum. 
Yep, and so. I'd like to note right there, even though we don't have a thousand videos on episode three, <laughs> I'm still going to drag I'm Paul to waiting it pretty for soon. It. Yes. We got a Rooster Travels video coming up on that one too later this summer. Exactly. So about the Athens Insane Asylum, there is actually a little folklore hmm. that was involved with this first. I love me a little folklore. And it was interesting. They said, well, and I'd asked a couple of the people I work with, I said, were you aware of this place? Oh, yeah. Did you go there? No. <laughs> Real quick, sweet, and to the point. Nope. nope. Not messing with that. So, there was a legend that spread around over in Athens, uh, a legend of the stain. The stain? To incoming freshmen at Ohio University as a rite of passage. The legend says that if one touches the stain, they will die a horrible and untimely death. Perhaps this is one way to deter the new kids from venturing inside the building illegally, or maybe it's a way to keep them safe. So according, and this is a publication I looked at, the Skeleton Key Chronicles, they didn't specify a date, but they said one student broke into the room, spent some time with, when we say the stain, this is coming from a woman who passed away inside the asylum named Margaret Schilling. I just about had a blonde moment and be like, how did she give you the message if she's dead? <laughs> Supposedly, if you allegedly touch the stain, Ron, you could die. It, well, basically, the person allegedly touched the stain and then died by suicide shortly after. Mm. So it's unclear whether or not his death was a coincidence. But yet the one thing that remains, the fear associated with the death has obviously impacted numerous generations to the Athens community. There's a lot of situations with ghosts and hauntings that kind of came on the neck of the woods. So I was like, okay, that's just kind of a precursor to what we were kind of uh, learning about as we go. Okay. So, yes, it started out as asylum. Yes, there were bad things that happened. Electroshock therapy. Situations that were just untimely people had died in the in the asylum it was just bad everything you could think of it's bad right down there um asylum bad. Bad. <laughs> the good news is that the university bought over a good portion of, of the building okay and renovated it used it for administrative offices they even have a, uh, a wing that houses the kennedy museum art which is kind of cool like to actually check that out um, some storage facilities, but the remainder of it's closed off. So it's still in function. Like it still to, has a To function. a point, okay. yes. Wow. Okay. I know. That's what I was saying. I was like, this is a good size, you know, structure building. Yeah. Anytime an you think big. of an asylum or something like that, you right. see this like dark, scary looking castle like building that's often just going to shit. And right. It's all Oh, it's creepy as cloudy. fuck just looking at it. It yeah. just, it gives me the heap jeeps. Um, yeah, I did not know it was like still in use some parts of it but there's obviously a remaining portion that is not in use and through video evidence that i was watching there's a bunch of really uh brave men and women that i've seen on youtube it's breaking in there. there yeah breaking in there trying to go the back way or kind of get around this fence or something the creepy thing outside of obviously what happened in the asylum is that there are several cemeteries that around the asylum area. Cemetery? Did I say it like that? Sorry. Cemeteries. <laughs> Simmer down <laughs> now. <laughs> so, I have no position to yeah, point out. Yeah, you shouldn't even be talking there uh, at all. Special Jack. I just um, had to point out he said simmer. <laughs> simmer, <just> symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> Strategery. Strategery. <laughs> so, at one of the cemeteries, <laughs> Katrina, Akata, <laughs> they both start with a K. <laughs> You just want me to go off topic all sorry, day today. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so they listed about 1,930 gravestones. Oh, wow. But which was really fucked up was close to about close to 1,700 of them. Actually, were only marked by just a number. It's got to be the worst. So you can imagine just seeing that. It's like there's so many, you know, I, that's what's the hardest thing to kind of just like center around. All these things that happen, obviously, if there was the bad that happened and you see that there's, there's no way to remember these individuals. It's just yeah. numbers right. on the, on the headstones. So that was a hard thing just to kind of really consider like, that is really creepy. I mean, just on the sense of that. Yeah, definitely. 
So that was just interesting with that. Now, going back to the story of the stain. The stain. <laughs> Ooh, that stain. <laughs> Gotta get that stain. I just keep thinking of like. Right. You know, you've seen a water boy, Bobby Boucher's yeah. sheets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H2O. Hey, you know. So Margaret Schilling was a patient at the Ridges. So mind you, when 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 Ohio University took ownership, they named this portion of the area called the Ridges. Okay. So that's what it is, essentially stands for. So she, Margaret Schilling was a patient in about the, in the 70s. And then the story that comes about was, I don't know, let me just try to see here what I was going to say. She, uh, she made this a is stupid. very big stain. She was playing, get this, she was playing hide and seek with other patients okay. on their supervisions of the nurses. Some suspected she got lost. The nurses neglected to find her six weeks. Six weeks later, a maintenance worker found her body uh, in a closed off portion of the facility. Hmm. Obviously, she appeared to be deceased for some time. Her body laid naked on the floor of the locker room. Her clothes were folded neatly beside her while her body was bathed or said while her body was bathed in the sun coming in through the windows. That sounds very eerily similar to the Lisa Lamb thing from yeah. the, I think that's right, from the Sicily yes. Hotel. Yes. Did I say that right? Sicily Hotel? I yeah. I think so. Okay. Sounds right. All right. The official cause of death, though, was listed as heart failure. They're thinking maybe she died from, you know, exposure from freezing temperatures in an unheated room, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, la, da, da. They removed her body from the room while cleaning well, well, cleaner sanitized the room. However, the interesting thing was the outline of her silhouette for days after they tried to remove it, but nothing worked. Oh, that kind of stain. Yeah. Ooh, that stain. <laughs> it says an explanation simple. There was a chemical reaction between her body and the acidic cleaning supplies left a permanent stain on the floor. Mm, okay. <laughs> so... It's the original mud flap girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But regardless of the stain, I, I just started seeing some more information where, where you know people had asked, well, would you consider going in there? Like, no, 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 not at all. No. It's it's a haunted ass place. I can only see maybe just covering like going into the Kennedy Arts Center just to check that out. But just watching some video, just going through the campus to see that is, yeah. it just sounds creepy. As it, it is. does. I don't know about going to places like that. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> I think people that can go by themselves to like abandoned places. Oh, you guys they make all those YouTube channels and stuff like that for it. But like, you guys are brave. Blows my mind. I would never brave. do something like that. Absolutely brave. People that go ghost hunting and stuff by themselves in the middle of the night, like, nope. <laughs> That's not. Yeah. All right, like, we'll come back and we'll uh, wrap this up. We'll be back in just one moment. Hello, everyone. Hi. What's going on over here? We got uh, Noah. Decided hey, buddy. To come on and be a guest on today's little podcast. Hi, bud. Uh, Noah. You were telling me the other day, uh, what sound does the rooster make? <laughs> oh, there it is! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> Are you getting shy? You kept saying you wanted to be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is the face of sleep. Mommy sleep time. Someone looks super tired. I think he is. Did you see Gigi? Oh, yeah. Did you go see Gigi and give her a paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I said, Daddy. Um, one more question. Do you know that Daddy loves his little baby boy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, say bye, Noah. Bye. Wait, bye. Say bye. Wait, say bye over there. Look over here. Say wait, hi, bye. bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, folks. Hello hope you, again. Hope you enjoyed that nice little we break hope you we did. had. That's my baby boy. 
He's just awesome. He's so adorable. You might actually hear him a little bit during this beginning of this segment because... Um, he did not want to miss out. It's a bedtime, and I don't know what happened. He used to lay down on his own and go to sleep by himself. He would just snuggle up to his little stuffed animal and go to sleep. And for some reason, out of nowhere it seemed, every night, he just does not want to go. And it's, every night's the same story. It's, Daddy, please, I want out. Daddy. He doesn't want to miss anything. Yeah, he knows how to get me the, how how to get attention though. He is going to. All he's got to do is cry for daddy. I'm you're like, going to be the one that's going to give in. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know what to say. I, yeah, that's just how it goes. It's your baby boy. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, no, I like doing this segment. I hope uh hope we can do it um a lot more. I know we're obviously going to do it more, but mm-hmm. like, you know. I'm not exactly 100% sure I would want to do any kind of, like, paranormal, like, investigation. You don't want to stay overnight? No. I mean, a hotel is different. I could do that. But it's I'll just one of those things I'm like. How about uh, you stay overnight and I'll just uh, watch on the camera. <laughs> Get your live feed and I'll just sit in the hotel room and go, yeah, we look good, buddy. Well, that would require you for you to stay up all night. And I don't think you can do that. I mean, I don't even know if I could. <laughs> just run a cable feed and let it run all night. <laughs> right. I'll just watch the footage the next day. But I don't know. It's just one of those things of like, I'm not really trying to go for it. Per se. <laughs> I like hearing about I it, reading too. about it, talking about it. But like, I don't, I don't know. It's going to take a lot. <laughs> but it could happen one day. But yeah. And we'll be ready. It's good stuff. Mm. I like it. Anyways. We, well, uh, well, well. It's that time again. We're going to jump straight into, well, not quite yet. We are going to go into our three shots. But first. I want to send a very special thank you and shout out to our our guest, uh, Austin Giles. Yes. We had a couple episodes yes. ago. Austin, we had a pleasure having you on, buddy. Yeah. I definitely can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, there's a little rumbling that he might start a podcast of his own. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Dude. I can't wait. That dude can talk your ear off about movies and stuff. I don't know what if it's going to be movie-based or not, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, he, him and his buddies got... Got a little thing. He even showed That's me awesome. like a little uh, intro clip he made too. It was pretty Seriously? Cool. Yeah, I'll have to oh, show you later. Gotta see that, Austin. Yeah. But yeah, thanks again, man. Yes. We really appreciate you having you on. Uh, looking forward to seeing what you can do. Good stuff. And now, Good stuff. it is time for Three Shots of Funny. Do it! Not as good, but oh, my Joker laugh, as Austin put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so my week, right? Yeah, it's your wife's week. Yes, yes. We are she named it wine time? This is wine time, Ron. Wine time. All right, here we go. I'm too sexy for my wine. I paid two forty nine. It makes me feel so fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too sexy for my wine cuz I paid 249. <laughs> That's <some> cheap wine. <laughs> wow. I mean boxes of wine were made for this <laughs> Francia. <laughs> wine in the box? Yeah. Yeah. That's got her name right. <laughs> box O wine. Box O wine for 249. <laughs> <sighs> All right. This next one is uh, my clip. It's called I'm Trying to Get Pulled Over. Come on. <laughs> I need the police. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm going to be speeding. Officer, I need assistance. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I'm trying to get pulled over. I see why. <laughs> I had to change it up from our cat and fart. Joke yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Let's try to stay out of trouble, but, you know. Right? The policia. <laughs> policia. <laughs> I need the police. <laughs> right? <laughs> Vamos. Um. Okay. Ready for my 
Yeah. I saved yours for last because oh, you okay. titled yours Turtle Power. I did. And I I, I grew up a huge fan of the Teenage Mutant oh. Ninja Turtles, so that thought that was pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Did not know this. Yeah. All right. Turtle Power, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> He is trying to have sex with that shoe. Was that what you're talking about? <laughs> He was saying something earlier today at work. He was like, hey. Dude, I saw this the other night. Fucking tears. Uh-huh. Fucking tears. And I was like, wait, this can't be. He's just like, he kept going back. Oh, dude. There is a video. Actually, I'm going to pause the podcast to find this video to show it right now. It will be perfect. Five, four, three, two. One. <laughs> All right, so. If he shoots on me, I'm going to be pissed. Oh, my God, there look is. at it. Oh, God, it looks like it's Oh, my out. God. Oh my I got to get my reading glasses on. Well, it's <laughs> been out 14 inches long. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. See, there it goes up Speedy. inside. We're impressed, dude. Oh, my God. I'm recording it. Uh, I wish you could pat him on the head. <laughs> oh, he just came, it looks like. I know there's all kinds of, like, <laughs> There's like white it's stuff. Cute. God, that I tell you what, here at the Lorinos, I oh have my God. With Oh, he's got this really interesting little like horn on it. Did you see that? It's like to <laughs> turn on the, the ladies. Like Apparently, oh, we're talking kind of making oh it. Oh my God. <laughs> you should see it from nothing. over here. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, he's done. Here. How do you know he's done? The guy's dangerously close to that turtle. No, it's still. Oh. oh shit! Oh my God! That's a that. Oh, what Did is? Do you it? have an orgasm? Oh my God! I'm it's a turtle gasm. Uh, it's a turtle gasm. Look at his eyes. He's rolling back in his head. <laughs> He's doing it again. Is he? Yes. I gotta see. Is that turtle pee? No. Oh, I think it was turtle pee. Turtle pee. That is so exciting. We love you too. Oh my God. Oh, look at him. Oh, oh, no, there's more coming out. <laughs> there's more. That is the most bizarre penis I've ever seen. Oh, God. I gotta get lower. <laughs> if he stuck that up inside the lady. Oh, look at it now. Oh, my God. Chuck, have you ever seen this? Yeah. Are you getting it? Can you see it? It's got like this foamy milk coming out of it. Whoa. What I have to do is send it to you. Yes. I'll download it and I'll send it to you. Yeah. No shit. I've never seen so much. How old is he? He's just ten. He's just a, when I was ten, I when I was ten, I could do that three or four times. Well, actually, about four. That is a that's that shocking. Very Elizabeth, would you describe what just happened? Your I think my turtle just had an oh, orgasm on my patio. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. He's, like, he's like, oh, maybe I was 12 when I started. When I was 12, when I was 10, I could do about the two or three times like that. Oh my god. Oh. oh, I did not expect you to turn that way at all. That wasn't the video I had imagined. <laughs> like the video I'd seen previously was something completely different. But oh that was that was worth it. Oh. <laughs> She's like, what is that on my patio? It's turtle cam. It's turtle cam. <laughs> turtle power. <laughs> oh god damn it oh, oh. well I hope you guys enjoyed that oh, man that thing's dick was weird <laughs> yeah for those of you just listening it looked like it popped open like a flower in a sense after it happened oh. man it's like 
one of those weird. You remember on Meet the Parents? <laughs> the, the, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big tortoise. Uh, yeah. Massive. Apparently, he put on a show for this yeah. family. <laughs> Oh God! Please help me. <laughs> oh, I'm about to have a laughing fit. Again. I don't know who else. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that was our show, ladies and gents. We hope you enjoyed. I bet my face turned as red as my shirt. I bet you mine is pretty, pretty much matching that too. Wow! Wow! That hurt. The gift that keeps on that hurt. That hurt. There's a lot of cum. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us if you've stayed this long. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, that felt good. <laughs> That's what we do here on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Eek! Eek! <laughs> That's what made me laugh also. That that tortoise yeah. was making some noises like... <laughs> it's, like <laughs> it's like he had a spank bank going on there. He's just staring off into nowhere. He <laughs> just sprays the floor. Hey, hey, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait until my wife watches this. Maybe one night. <laughs> I'll spring that on her. <laughs> So wait, the tortoise name was is Speedy? Speedy? <laughs> Speedy's Big O? I just noticed the turtle gasm. <laughs> the oh, Big O wow. for Speedy. Well, congratulations, Speedy. Yep. We're happy for you, buddy. Godspeed to you. Godspeed. <laughs> and now for the pods. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seriously. Seriously, seriously. All right, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for checking out of here. out. <laughs> rate, rate, like, and subscribe. Yes. Buy some shit. Buy some merch. Uh, but seriously, we need to merch. Get the ball rolling. Merch, merch, merch. We've got some big plans. Definitely want to rep our stuff because obviously we put out <coughs> quality content. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to make a living off this ball. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit? This is funny. <laughs> get to watch fucking tortoises blow their loads on the floors of somebody's dick. <laughs> So what'd you guys do this week? Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye, peace. <laughs>